actually have sense of home only now after my marriage. Uh, I married last year, a uh, year and a half, and I actually love being called Guneep Munga Kapoor, and Guneep Munga feels uh, incomplete uh, <laughs> to me. Uh, so for me, sense of home is now with family, and is Delhi, is my husband who's here, um, and who I forgot to thank at the Oscar speech, so thank you. <laughs> Uh, absolute powerhouse speaker coming up next. Guneet Monga is that absolutely rare person who has broken every sort of barrier in cinema to become a two-time Oscar winner in an industry notoriously mainstream. She has backed cinema that she believes in. Uh, you know, we were talking about Rahul being an outlier. She's gone even further. And when you just look at her cinema uh, bibliography, it is amazing, from Gangs of Vasipur to Masan, Lunchbox, The Elephant Whisperers, which absolutely charmed the world, to Period, uh, and now to a super successful film called The Kill, which was again about a, a thriller and mainstream action. She has straddled the universe, but always and always on her own terms. So to have her here and to have had Rahul Pryor, and they're both now collaborating on another film, is to really look at the finest, you know, people who are passionate about art and vision and living on their own terms in the most difficult circumstances. Guneet is a producer and she's constantly shifting the boundaries of the business of cinema. So ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Guneet Monga on stage. So Hello, everybody. Good evening. So, Guneet, thank you so much. You know, both Guneet and Rahul are in the midst of films. Guneet is going to leave at 5 o'clock in the morning for a shoot. So, it's really very special to have you here, Guneet. I'm glad this worked out. <laughs> yeah. Guneet, so, you know, we were just looking at this amazing body of work. And, you know, I don't know how many people know, uh, like I said, the Genesis stories. So, I would really like to start there. Uh, you know, you're a two-time Oscar winner, an amazing achievement for the whole country, and backing really unusual cinema. You know, one documentary about periods, another about, you know, two Tamil uh, elephant caregivers, you know, in an obscure village in Tamil Nadu. You take very unusual stories and you put it on the world map. That's amazing, you know. But what's more amazing is that you lost your parents when you were very young, and you literally had no frameworks and you started with borrowing money to become a producer, you know? So first, tell us about the family, you know, and the, the making of you, who helped you become this uh, sort of woman of resilience, you know? Um, thank you for having me here. Um, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I'm the only child of my parents, and uh, I think my dad was a hustler. Um, and was a hustler? Yeah, full-on hustler. <laughs> and uh, we were pretty much, you know, uh, living end-to-end, -end, you know, day-to-day. -day. He, he did many, many businesses, um, and I would just be fascinated by his brain of, he was Jugaad 101, you know, there's nothing that is not possible. Um, if I would ever call him, you know, these are little stories that, are way back in my head, and I would ever call him, and I'd be like, "Ab kaao," you know, and he'll be like, "Tere piche," oh. <laughs> you know. That was that was his that was his constant answer to me. So I think he's the reason. He told me that there's nothing that you can't do. There's nothing that you know we can't achieve. Uh, one of my favorite films is Life Is Beautiful, and my life with him has largely been like that because there were so many things falling apart. Um, but for me, there was nothing that was impossible because he chose and protected me um, from everything. And, and I've, I've, I've been very, very loved by both of them. Um, our extended family was very chaotic, was very, very toxic, was very hard. And uh, we actually 
I was born in GK2 in Delhi and on a one very uh, tough night, you know, there were like two trucks of police and we had to fl fled, be, be taken out of our own house because of just property and joint family nonsense. <clears throat> and um, and we and we actually overnight moved to uh, outskirts of Delhi uh, in Faridabad in a small uh, colony called Chambud Village in identical apartments, two small bed, two bedroom apartment. But we but you know we came from a very different place, uh, a very huge house, main road, GK2. And uh, and my parents just always thought that this is top cap arrangement, and uh, we were there for eight years, uh, from from the age twelve to twenty, and those were pretty much formative years for me. I have a friend here in the audience from Chamwood, uh, which is very sweet. Um, but you know, I really formed my own because there was a colony, there were friends, there was, you know, and then of course college happened in Delhi and. Uh, by the time, I think my only thing in my life was to buy a house for my parents and uh, I was, I became a DJ, I was selling cheese on streets, I was a um, salesperson, whatever it took. My, um, I was working throughout my college in various jobs, internships, you know, Hindustan Times, um, journalism, fra photography, whatever it took till I found uh, an international film to be part of as an intern's intern and then I slowly w walked my way up and became you know a production coordinator, production manager, line producer to the person who's getting all the permissions, managing the production, so very managerial position. And uh, in all of this somewhere my parents were still really struggling to ha get a house and that's all they wanted, that's all I wanted. Ek hi sapna tha, ghar and by the age 22, we were able to buy a house. I was able to work wow. that hard with yeah. with money that you put together. Yes, with money that I, in GK1, Pahadi Wala Gurdwari Ke Samne, everything that they wanted. Uh, but by the ha time the house got made, they both passed uh, within six months uh, of each other. And then I just was so, you know, disillusioned about any dreams of such you know like what is it what does it take what is it what is it for um, and moved to Bombay Lockstar well uh, shared a room with five other girls like shared mattresses and do teen hazaar rupay rent ke andar contribute karke producer vanna tha so it started from there that's an amazing story Vineet it's just really very very moving story uh, from there to two Oscars, you know, is, is a journey that we definitely want to explore. Just, you know, when you were saying that, like you had this chutzpah and this get-go that, like you said, you were just doing anything because your goal was to get a house for your parents. I just wanted to bring home the texture of that childhood, just a little bit more if you could share with the audience. Uh, you know, you have a lot of fans in our team. Uh, and they've done like superb research on you. So I know every little uh, sort of detail of your life. So <laughs> forgive me for wanting to put a spotlight That's on okay. that. That's okay. uh, that, you know, apparently there was a night when you were saying when you were still living with your joint family that, tell me if this is an apocryphal story, that you were afraid to go open the fridge of your own home and your parents and you were huddled just to even open the fridge in your home. How does something like that happen? And is that a true story? Yeah, so this was just, you know, it's actually very hard to talk about it in Delhi, you know, because um, it's just very weird. Uh, but yes, I was born in a very big house in GK2, uh, Main Road, and uh, there was a lot of uh, property fights, you know, between the family, grandparents, and uh, it was not normal. I've grown up with a lot of Punjabi abuses and you know, a lot of toxicity to the point, but I think my mom's side gave a very big fridge. So even in that huge house, my parents and I were in one room and we were pretty much confined to that one room. And uh, to get out of that room to experience the whole house or anything, it was very hard. It used to be just flurry of abuses. It used to be just, you know, unwelcome atmosphere. Um, so it was a fridge, so it was actually half freezer and half fridge. And our room did not have space to put it. 
So it was from our room, we go outside on the right in the living room. And that for me from my childhood was war zone. You know, so if you have to go to the fridge, we used to time ki subha sab ke utne se pehle use kar lete hain aur raat ko use kar lenge. Agar dupair ko, sham ko fridge use karna hai, to matlab, it used to be an effort. It used to be like, you know, we'll be heard, we will be seen, you know, we will, so it was very hard. Um, yeah, sometimes I used to go and sometimes I used to get screamed at. If my mom used to go, she used to get screamed at. So we were just that, you know. Uh, and if we even told anything to dad at the end of the day, it used to create into a huge ruckus and a huge fight. So kitna batay na, kitna wahi cheez bar bar. You know, so it was, it was hard. It was a very, very hard childhood um, at the home. And I think I grew up being very scared and very, you know, like it was very easy to bully. And there's been a lot of therapy over the years that has allowed me to articulate all of this. But yeah, ek nasha hota hai, paise ka aur power ka, which I've seen very closely. And also especially, I think, the property rates of GK2. Uh, and this... And this mindset of, um, you know, wealth, Johani, but we're sitting on it, <laughs> you know, so it's not, there's no cash flow, but you're just very rich, <laughs> you know, so, so there's a certain fabric of people like that, you know, which uh, was very interesting and very unfortunate. Yeah. No, thank you for sharing that. I mean, it's a, it's a very raw story to share, but I wanted to draw attention to that because, you know, I mean, I think it really further accentuates the journey you've made uh, to be such a successful producer. Uh, and like I said, to put India on the global map, you know, to come from very sort of torn beginnings like this is really a, it's a very powerful story. And just, you know, we'll come to now what you're doing with the industry and all of that. But again, I wanted to share with the audience that then in this, you're heartbroken, you go to Bombay, uh, you know, and then the first film that you ever produced was on borrowed money and it flopped, you know? How do you deal with something like that? And how did you pull yourself out of that? How did you pay it back? So I was 21 when... And how did you even think of being a producer? So I started working in international films in production uh, in, in Delhi. There's a lot of international film work that comes here. And that uh, actually uh, allowed me to dream and to see you know, I, I was always somebody who took on more responsibility. I liked taking more responsibility. So I was like, yes, let's do it, you know. So even if I didn't know, uh, I very quickly became the most favorite intern or, you know, like all departments used to give me work and I liked it. Uh, I liked taking on more than I could, you know, even handle and be able to deliver, put in that extra time. I was very, very curious and passionate. And um, uh, I remember one, uh, one of my first directors, I worked with, uh, was uh, Pan Nanil and uh, Dilip Shankar was our line producer. And uh, I was in that office and everybody, there was like this buzz that there's this new intern, new intern, everybody's very happy we have a new intern. And uh, they all like assumed I know computer very well because you know what was my job? To convert a directory which had every phone number written of entire Bombay film industry into an Excel sheet. <laughs> so. <laughs> So I used to be always doing tuck, tuck, tuck on the computer. So you were the computer whiz. <laughs> in their mind. In their perception. So then they came to me and they said, Kuneet, tum kya kisi aur ke baal kisi aur ke chehre pe? This was Pan Nanan's first job to me. Kisi aur ke baal kisi aur ke chehre kuch aise kar paoge? <laughs> and I looked at him and I said, sir, ek baar sikha doge to baaki sare kar loge. <laughs> you know, so he's like, he didn't understand. Because I was, you know, given very, like all departments give me work. Ki ye mehne... There was a there was a bookshelf bigger than this screen uh, of uh, books that they were because we were doing a period film. They had marked books with post-its, and they wanted me to you know document the whole, like digitize the whole thing. And I just they thought that it'll take me forever. I finished it in a week, and they were like books, everything digitized and put it into you know folders. So this is an intern's job. So I started like that as a photocopy girl, um, you know, and. and uh, and then you one borrowed of my money. First, I'll come there. But my first actor was Milan Suman in that film. So it all adds up, uh, you know, like from taking chai and coffee and be like, so picking up Anurag Kashyap at the airport. He wrote the dialogues of that film. Uh, so, you know, so, so those were my first intern jobs. And, um, and then when, uh, by, by the time I was 21, I'd, I'd 
done this for three, four years and, re and understood production, execution. I'd also become like an EA to producers, international producers over here. So I was end to end doing the whole thing. One of my best friend's mother, aunt, uh, my aunt Anurita Segal allowed me to be her assistant and I just grew in that space. I was like production to Agya, now I have to figure out how to learn what script to produce and how to say yes to a script, how to give feedback. So my neighbor in Delhi, we had come back to Kailash Kodli after Suraj Kun on rent. And uh, my neighbor there said, you have mass communication, I had studied mass communication. And we will, um, I want you to open, I, I want to start a business that you can run, ki, you know, make cute, cute videos of little kids and uh, we will sell it to their parents, you know, like a studio, <laughs> like newborn baby shoot. Yeah. <laughs> So I just looked at him and I was like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that was my first question. And he said, uh, 50 lakhs. I said, very good. This idea is very bad. I didn't like studying to shoot baby videos. Uh, I'll go to Bombay and make a film. So I sold him a dream. I've never been to Bombay. That's insane. And he agreed. <laughs> He's like, <laughs> is the neighbor here today? <laughs> Kamlesh Agarwal, I should have. Mr. <laughs> Kamlesh Agarwal, I didn't know we were going to talk about him. I would have invited him. But he now lives in Narayana, I think. Um, and I adore him. And he's amazing. We've been in touch. <coughs> so he gave the first 50 lakhs. And he's like, take it, Bombay, chale jao. I went to Bombay. And what was my game? Who, who did I know in Bombay? Because when I was in Delhi, I used to hire a lot of lights from Bombay equipment. So I knew light vendors. <laughs> you know? I knew all the light boys. <laughs> You're a scamster, <laughs> Gideon. <laughs> yeah. So I, that was my, like I, did, I, I didn't know anybody else. I knew a couple of actors that I had audi helped audition and bring uh, Vinay Pathak, a couple of other actors uh, that were, were part of international scene. Um, but outside of that, I just really knew just vendors. You know, uh, for a lot of big equipment that was not in Delhi, specialized equipment we used to bring from Bombay. So I knew those massive camera and grip guys. And I went to them and I was like, uh, I AD se milwa do, to somebody who's an assistant director, then maybe that assistant director can introduce me to a director. So they used to, they started introducing me to ADs and all the ADs I met in food court in Infinity Mall. <laughs> and, uh, and, I, and I used to meet everybody and say, I have 50 lakh rupees, who has a story? So, no one has a story, I have 50 lakh rupees. So it really started from there uh, at, at food court. And karte, 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 I met lots of people. I met lots of people who thought that iske to lakh hum rakh lege, but I was smarter than that. I, I was also being able to see through. I was like, kahani sunao na, mujhe kahani kya hai. To mujhe bhi pata chale ki achhi hai, nahi hai. You're just... And then I met Suhash Kapoor, who then went on to make Jordi LLB um, and many other successful films and shows, Maharani. His first film, he's also from Delhi, came from journalist background, and his first film, uh, and he also had access to similar kind of money, was looking for the other half. <laughs> and I really liked the story, and it was children, cricket film, uh, classic, you know, Jojita Vaisikandar structure, uh, rich school, poor school, and the last ball, and the crescendo builds up, and the music comes, and what will happen, and lots of suspense in the last ball, how the underdog wins, classic underdog story. Uh, so that film was called Say Salam India and it really and we were making this in 2006 and we were thinking we are very very intelligent because 2007 mein India World Cup pe ja hai, and we will have our film ready during that time so we will be able to you know uh, ride on that ride yeah. on that and be able to market a lot and we did we got Reebok we got many other people looking for cricket content to market so we finished our film in time March was the cricket yahan par unko nahi jersey mil rahi hai sahara se brand mil raha hai and pura cricket team ja raha hai aur wahan par meri ek 1.5 crore ki film then we went on to raise 25 25 more so it was 75 each just to be thorough in math <laughs> and uh, uh, we uh, and we were very excited that the film is coming out during the uh, cricket season and in those ac rooms when you're discussing marketing it was just like you know uh, 2000 crore lagte hai india par you know, India to aage jayega, usse char saal pehle India was, paan saal pehle India was in... Suneri lal ki, what is that? Mungeri lal ki, Suneri sakti. So India was in finals with Australia and it was a good team. It was run, it was... So you know, there was all this, Samsung had come with TVs like this, Pepsi had come with Pepsi Gold. And there was all this flurry of, you know, this was the first time Setmax had taken very expensive rights and 
TV screens had shrunk to 75% because 25% was running was ads <laughs> because cricket तो उसके अंदर हम अपनी फिल्म रिलीज कर रहे थे एंड इट वॉज थ्री दिस इज गेटिंग टू क्लिफ एंगर यू हैव टू गिव दैंड इट वॉज थ्री मैच के बाद इंडिया विल गेट इन टू द नेक्स्ट राउंड सो द फर्स्ट मैच इंडिया लॉस्ट उनके पुतले जलने लग गए यहाँ पर एंड यहाँ पर सब काफ़ी हार्ड ब्रेक हुआ दैन द सेकेंड मैच इंडिया मेट द हाइएस्ट रन एवर इन सिंगल वन डे एंड देन द थर्ड मैच वॉज द डे ऑफ आर रिलीज Of course, India will go on the final, and and mm-hmm. and 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 सो फिल्म री रिलीज बट क्रिकेट अगर दिया तो हमारा थिएटर जल जाएगा यू नो सो वी कॉन्ट टॉक अबाउट क्रिकेट एंड फर्स्ट पर्सन आई एवर रोट ऑफ फर्स्ट चेक टू प्रोड्यूसर स्टोरी सो But so you lost all that money. All the, the money. The film never got released. No, so the film got released. Right. All the dubbers were, all the reels were at. It got released, but nobody came to see it. And then the theatre guys. <laughs> The the theater guys were like, Ye le jao, or na hum ho So the films were technically sent back after the release. So th- I had then to picked up a job at Gajni in Bombay, and it was very cool to work with Amir and as the head of production. You know, be as a 23 year old in and out of, or no, 21, 22 years old, be in and out of Gajni, and you know that I was I was running the production. I was always very good at running the production. I just chose to be my own producer and raise the money to the entrepreneurial hustle. बट अगर मुझे नौकरी करनी होती तो वो मैं कभी भी कर सकती थी सो आई देन पिक अप दैट जॉब टू सस्टेन एंड आई वॉज एक्साइटेड टू वर्क ऑन अ बिग हिंदी फिल्म एंड देन आई वेंट अप टू माई बॉसेज एट गजनी एंड आई टू द प्रोड्यूसर्स एंड आई सेट आई कॉन्ट डू इट आई टू लीव दिन वाई आई सेट आई मेड अ फिल्म इन बॉम फॉर नो फॉल्ट ऑफ माइंड आई टेकन फिफ्टी लैक्स फ्रॉम माई नेबर एंड इफ आई डोंट रिटर्न इट दैन आई कॉन्ट बी अ प्रोड्यूसर सेवेंटी फाइव सो दट हाउ विल यू रिटर्न आई सेट आई फिगर इट आई नीट टू गो टू डेली So I came to Delhi. I went to my school in Blue Belts, which is opposite LSR. And I said, "Up, बचपन में पचास रुपए बच हम से लेकर हमें सिंगल स्क्रीन्स में शो दिखाने लेके जाते थे. So can you just collect fifty rupees from two thousand kids?" So my principal was like, "Sure, Mrs. Suman Kumar." And मेरे घर के पीछे सपना सिनेमा था. I went to सपना सिनेमा. I said, "सुबह नौ से बारह के morning nine to twelve show. How much money do you make?" They said, "Five thousand." I said, "I'll give you ten. Will you give me the theater?" So basically, thousand seater, fifty fifty rupees per kid, fifty thousand show, ten thousand for the theater guy, forty thousand for me, and uh, the kids came in and they had a fantastic reaction to the film. It was beautiful. It was electrifying. It was amazing. It was great, great film, good production. Um, and then I went back to my principal and I said, uh, "Can you uh, write me a letter of appreciation?" And then I straight took it to DPSR Kepuram, <laughs> uh, which had twenty five thousand kids. <laughs> And uh, and then I did the same deal with Sangam Cinema, <laughs> and then twenty shows I did there. Okay, then all the DPS of Delhi got green light. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> and then uh, I went straight because my jaan se apna canopy utha thi. You know, Hansel Mehta's next series on scams has to be on you. Yeah, I'm Jugad one o one. Not so much scam, but Jugad. Yeah, Jugad. <laughs> जहाँ से कैनोपी अपनी उठाती थी बिकॉज आई पुट कैनोपी फॉर लाफिंग आउट चीज एंड सेल इट ऑन स्ट्रीट एंड अलग नंदा और सब जगह में स्टॉल लगा के खड़े हो जाते थे प्लीज ट्राई लाफिंग आउट चीज यू नो फोर हंड्रेड रुपीज पर आवर आई यूज टू गेट सो सेल्स गर्ल सो जहाँ से मैं कैनोपी उठाती थी दैट यूज टू बी नेहरू प्लेस लिंटास का ऑफिस आई स्ट्रीट वेंट अप टू दम आई सर मीट योर हेड टू द रिसेप्शनिस्ट एंड दिस आई सर आई यूज टू वर्क हेयर द फ्री लैंस But I used to work here, so somehow I met the head of marketing, and then I said, "I have thousand kids. I have already done thirty shows. I will do three hundred more shows. I will give you the interval." So I sold my interval for twenty thousand, uh, and they had, uh, I said, fifteen minutes of interval. <laughs> I then went and picked up all the audio cassettes. Thus is our audio cassettes. The audio CDs were made from a vendor in Punjab, and he said, "Our to nuksan ho gaya. No picture nahi dekh raha." एंड आई सर आपकी कॉस्ट कितने की है मतलब आप थोड़ा पैसा कमा लो आपके दस रुपए सो ऐसे ठीक है सारी दस हज़ार ऑडियो सीडीज़ दे दो 
I stood in front of the theaters when kids used to come out, 25 rupees per CD. <laughs> Even the market price was 75 rupees. And 25 rupees, I sold all the 10,000 of them. So I did 370 shows. <laughs> Made all the money. <laughs> Took nine months of my life, and I became a producer. <laughs> That's how. That's an amazing story, really. And so you paid him back, and uh, oh. so, yeah, Could super. Be. So, Buneet, you know, we'll come to how you now, uh, you know, the um, film is just, Kiran Rao's film, just Lapata Ladies, got picked as the uh, India entry into the Oscars. And you were saying that this is just the wrong approach, you know. So now coming from the background, you know all the sort of hard wires of production and how to make something succeed. Why, what is your understanding? Like, how did you make, you take two films very unusual subjects, small small projects, and put them onto the global stage. And why were you saying Lapata Ladies is, even if it's a good film, bad film, but the possibly the wrong choice because it doesn't have the correct structures around it. So give us now some... I don't uh, think I ever said that. It Maybe could be an apocryphal story from the internet, you know, that you're saying that it needs an American I actually, distributor. I actually love uh, Lapata Ladies. It's one of the best films of this year. Yeah, it's one of the best films this year. Uh, but one has to just understand that Oscars is also an American uh, TV show, you know, so it is an award show uh, run in US. I'm also very petrified of all the cameras here. Please don't, uh, like I'd like to talk freely, but it's all mobiles on. Don't do record, listen to So, you know, so everything just gets blown but, out of... But I do have to tell you that this session is being recorded, so I know, but please I, speak just, freely. Just things, but things get blown out of proportion, I feel, always. So, uh, but what I mean to say is that, you know, when you are, when you are compete, like the recent period end of sentence or uh, um, mm -hmm. Elephant Whisperers, of course, very good, important films, beautifully, you know, if I say so myself, well made. Uh, but they also had Netflix as a distributor in US. So having a US distributor goes a very long way in terms of a campaign, in ter you know, it's been running for 90, five years uh, and it's a campaign to be run in US and uh, it's important and significant to have a US distributor but that doesn't mean the choice of the film is wrong I have actually not seen uh, all we imagine is light in uh, in the final selection uh, I have to say that um, that finally when countries summit in the foreign language category uh, I am. I was very heartbroken because Lunchbox had a U.S. distribution in Sony Picture Classic, and was not selected from India. It was a very beautiful film to be able to travel and to be able to show, be shown. And similarly, La Pata Ladies is a very, very beautiful film. People will love watching it. People will love seeing it. Having American distribution helps you do an even epic uh, campaign and a sustained year-long, you know, thing that a grooming of the market happens year long. If supposing this whole thing was supposed to be done in India, if the whole world was competing for a film fair, just for conversation purpose, and you had Korean, Iranian, Italian, New Zealand, Australian, Chinese, European, France, German, every film coming here, best film of those countries coming here, but maybe the Iranian film was distributed by American Productions, or maybe, you know, um, there was a, a French film distributed by a Ycom or a Geo or a, a, a Dharma Productions or you know so you would just those titles would be buzzy you know you would know the but if you're if you're here and and you're you're coming as a foreigner here and in two months you want to get to all the journalists who matter you want to get to all the niches that matter and to all the voters it is ask it is a lot of work so it has been years of um, you know uh, that understanding that a, a partnership with a U.S. distributor uh, goes a long way. In fact, RRR had re-released and they brought in distribution uh, just so that it can get into theaters, it can get the marketing of the theaters. So it's important. How do you stand out between 70, 80 other countries and other films? So it's, uh, so one, what is the film? I think as a film, La Pata Ladies is beautiful. I, I It has, and Amir Khan Productions has actually gone there with Lagan Lagan, been nominated, <laughs> pretty much the only one that is nominated, right? Um, I've not, I've never even entered that category uh, because, well, 
uh, it's so but now there is this way of you know that there are two films that even the academy puts over and above the country puts so i'm hoping both the films go in you know but uh, running a campaign is a work that you need your partners to do you need people who know that to do it of course you'll hire a pr you'll so i i um, I, f I i've just been saying that at every stage and everywhere that it goes a long way so it almost is uh, for any film having that ambition should think of having a distributor early on and how that works that actually does not it's a very long uh, cut down thing but i feel like each of us from india goes there and runs a campaign and i feel like there should be a collective um, uh, database so that each of us is not starting from day one so you know whatever gali boy did or whatever jali katu did or whatever uh, visarni did or should all be documented or chelo uh, uh, show did which was pandana's film which got into the shortlist last year which was amazing got into top 15 and then from top 15 you go to top 5 and then winning to matlab is so it literally becomes a sort of collective action to break I into that i hope so that, i yeah. hope like because you know as a country it's a big award it's uh, we'd like to be there more often and win more often we love it we yeah, celebrate like parasite it. winning literally put korean cinema but it was also you have to see the participation of the distributor there uh, i think I, i mean again it was a24 or it was neon uh, it was a distributor there so it's been years of you know films being discovered at the festival and then a sony picture classic or a neon or a a24 or you know landscape would come pick it up and then start marketing it and building a campaign there is years of that that has happened in the foreign language category so uh, you know gunit we could talk for hours i have so many questions to ask you your own production house you know was named by your mother and again i'm going by things which are on the internet but it's a yeah. name she suggested she had cancer and she was already you know sort of uh, um, you know she was uh, very, very ill and in hospital unwell. when she named it but like i said so you know karan johar is your friend ekta is your friend Anurag Kashyap is your friend. You've collaborated with all of them, uh, but you've walked a very distinct path for yourself. You know, and like you could have access to money. You're a two-time Oscar winner now, but you're still um, doing a very distinctive body of work. So tell us about the vision that's driving your production company. So my company is called Sikhya Entertainment. It keeps. It means keep learning and keep growing. My mom named it Sikh Se Sikhya Bana, and at that point of time. thought it's very punjabi as a name and then i have grown to love it and grown to you know uh, take it as Could a blessing little can you all all hear her at the back yeah so of course um, sikhya is very it means to keep learning and keep growing uh, my mom named it and uh, it's um, and now achin jain and i we are two partners who run it um Over the years, it's been 17 years in the business, and uh, I produced Say Salam India and Das Vidanya on my own, and then when I went on to work on Once Upon a Time, after my parents passed, I went on to take up a job at Once Upon a Time in Mumbai for Balaji. Um, I was not; I was the supervising producer on the film, like the head of production, and somewhere there, I met Anurag Kashyap, who then asked me to work for him and work with him, and I then worked for six years and ran Anurag Kashyap Films. and then started come came back to sikhya and then you know did i'll i'll come back to Claire. asking you about <coughs> the vision yeah. but you know again anurag kashyap was a very fundamental relationship a professional relationship in your life and that you know you learned a lot and when you first spoke about the idea of home uh, and the fact that you lost your home and then you lost your parents uh, there was a lot of grief and again this could be wrong i'm obviously quoting just little shards of things we've read elsewhere that when you parted ways with anurag that you felt you'd lost an another home you know so can you talk about that and you know why was there that sense and have you now found a sense of home you know yeah so uh, yes there's always been a sense of abandonment and starting from scratch you know be it when i was 12 years old or when i lost my parents at 23 um it was always like starting from absolute zero or even below um and then yes uh, there was a lot of identity being a producer and running anurag kashyap films and it was his decision to move on uh, but for me it was also uh, you know uh, working with somebody who's just who who loves cinema and it was like going to film school so it was it it's yes it it it, it was a home and it is uh, something that i always cherish and i'm very grateful for 
for six years for the knowledge I learned everything there. <clears throat> and uh, at that point of time, it, there was a lot of grief to process, which I didn't. Uh, over the years, I just think I delayed all the grief to um, work and, and work at 20 films and at a time and produce, just take on more and more responsibility and that was my way of handling grief. But uh, that moment when I had to figure out and get back to Sikha, it was not easy. It took me two, three years to get up and running again. But literally more power to my two partners at that point of time, which is two people who worked with me, Shan and Achin, and hope in their eyes and everybody else uh, around me was like, we'll figure it out, we'll do it. No, we don't know how to, uh, but, but one step at a time. I mean, uh, we did a lot of films, but running a company is a whole beast in its own because you have so many team members, you have such a huge process. Um, yes, and that led me to figure out therapy, a lot of healing, and therapy actually really, really helped me uh, articulate and be grateful for everything that I've had than to you know, lean into something that got, uh, something that maybe was not my plan at that point of time. And as of today, I look back and I'm very, very grateful for those, um, for the years and even for the vision that I was ready to fly on my own. Yeah, no, it's, I mean, so many, you know, it's literally roller coasters and each time you've picked yourself up. And yeah. so uh, that question I asked you that, do you now have a sense of home? Have you stopped looking for a home? You know, do you find, are you your own home? I actually have sense of home only now after my marriage. Uh, I married last year, a uh, year and a half. And I actually love being called Guneet Munga Kapoor and Guneet Munga feels uh, incomplete uh, <laughs> to me. Uh, so for me, sense of home is now with family and is Delhi, is my husband who's here um, and who I forgot to thank at the Oscar speech, so thank you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> You forgot to thank him at the Oscar speech. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you know, <laughs> Rahul Bose. Rahul Bose is so old world. There's a whole new ideal man right here. You know. Yeah, who was yeah. there for like a month and a half, and all the hundred sari looks with elephants that I had was all because of him. You know, uh, he was the one putting them together. You know, with what? With what? There was no other team member or staff. You know, like. Uh, I was wearing sarees and going asking for votes with elephants. I was wearing elephant accessories and everywhere. And I used to get into screenings and hustle <laughs> and be like, yeah, the Indian who made the elephant movie, you know? <laughs> so it was method dressing. Method dressing. Yeah, yeah, fully, whatever it takes. <laughs> uh, so, you know, just constantly being, I was wearing elephants even on that day. Uh, those little, little things. So, um, uh, but yes, a sense of home now is, uh, and abhi bhi karam bhumi aur dharam bhumi mein jang chal rahi hai because love is now in Delhi and work is in Bombay and uh, I'm still figuring out but uh, I want to be more at home because for me, my treasure is that I found parents uh, and uh, after 17 years now or 16 years of losing, I'm now 40, um, 16, 17 years I found parents and I'm just obsessed with that. So definitely I found a home and, and in, in all logic sense but also a, a lot of love and a lot of stability like that and that has given me a lot of joy so I got married on 12th of December and I won an Oscar on 12th of March oh, wow. so three months uh, speed <laughs> so uh, I used to joke with him that it's going to happen I mean I had two life mein. <laughs> <laughs> you know I, I, I feel like you know we I, I mean I, I really really wanted to get married so yeah uh, that's amazing. <laughs> so just, you know, we're going to run out of time. I was asking you about the vision. So now, Guneet, you want to start a platform for women in cinema. Yeah. Uh, just being a woman producer, and like I said, a very distinctive producer, what do you bring to the set? Like, you know, I asked Rahul to kind of assess himself that what's distinctive about him. So when you think of yourself as a producer, what are you bringing to the job that, say, your peers are not bringing, you know? Yeah, I think exposure. You know, exposure defines us on who we are. So because I was able to travel so much, I've had films that have been selected in so many festivals, you know, I think uh, several films went to Cannes, I mean, 19 films have gone to, nine films went to Cannes, 19 at Toronto, uh, Sundance, Venice, many, many films that have broken out. So I've had an exposure. I've traveled the world, I've taken Indian stories forward, I've built partnership, I've opened those doors. So it's a very unique perspective I have and a response I have to stories because I look at something and I was like, how can I add value? And if I can add value, where can I take it? What is the best in the world that does this? So only then, you know, I feel like I can come and do justice to this. 
uh, yeah, and even kill. You know, for a matter of fact, we sold it to Lionsgate in U.S. from Toronto. We took it to Toronto. It broke out. We sold just the Just to whole share world. with you that Lionsgate is what produced John Wick. So you know, it's it's really their first important. foreign language film ever as an acquisition. So um, and and we sold uh, the whole world, uh, just like what we did with Lunchbox. So all these are new uh, uncharted territories to go into, looking at the business, innovating the business, innovating distribution. You know because. I feel like ideas are free and the magic lies in impact and the, sorry, the magic lies in the execution and the impact lies in distribution. So distribution is always controlled by the studios, by the big, you know, um, oh. because that is what gets you the box. That's the first. So to, to innovate distribution, to be able to tell our stories, to be able to take our skin, our language, our color to a to a larger non-diaspora audiences and to be able to be in that business. So my dream is now to make a brown panther, you know, <laughs> our own superhero or um, or a crazy rich Indians because we are that, right? So uh, so we're also that. Uh, our weddings are epic. So, and the wedding <laughs> industry. So, you know, seeing bigger dreams and of course multiple Oscars for, <laughs> for foreign language and otherwise, why not? Yeah. That's a wonderful, hopeful note to end thank on, Gunit. And thank you so much for sharing this thank story. You. It's been amazing, really thank amazing. You so much. Thank you for being thank here. Thank you for having me.